Welcome everybody, the time has come. We are gonna be testing the performance of all of our mappers against each other. My grandma-in-law sued me this hat, so, you know, I'm wearing it in this video. We will run the benchmarks towards the end of the video. So first we will go over what I've done to try to speed things up. And by the way, big disclaimer, I am not professional code optimizer guy. The source code is in the description. So if you wanna have a hand at speeding these up and contributing, you know, go ahead. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, I will explain the cache component by going to the reflection mapper. So this is where we're using reflection to map from one object to another. Basically, the cache allows me to utilize static typing to kind of allow me to use the input type to more reliably get to the cached entry. And this is going to be relevant for when I'm trying to cache functions instead of just regular entry objects like a list in this case. So the big change between what I've been implementing before and these implementations here is I'm using this weird cache because I wanted to kind of take the cache out of the equation. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. The rest of this specific implementation is actually quite the same. So let's close the reflection mapper with the expression mapper. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm basically caching this generic type, this function that I'm generating. One thing that I had to take care of here is because what I'm doing is I'm accepting a specific type that is boxed up, I had to perform this conversion or cast to the default type that we're accepting, which is in this case, it would be type A, but it's boxed up. So we're basically saying, okay, make another Lambda function where the parameter that we will put into the original function will be cast to this original type that has been boxed up. And this is pretty much the only adapter that I had to write for this expression thing. Uh, the rest of it is pretty much the same. Uh, next goes the IL generator, so IL mapper, where we're generating IL code. Surprisingly, I did not have to do any sort of casting. I basically just said define the method with this signature and I was still putting the regular box stop type in there and everything just worked. So that was a well, quite a quick win for me there. Otherwise, all I'm doing is the method info that I'm getting. I am using delegate.create delegate of a specific type. I'm casting it. And that is the thing that I'm caching. Following the IL mapper, we worked, I think, on source generators, but I have Roslyn here. So let's take a look at the Roslyn mapper. Again, this is where we're generating code at runtime. And this one was the toughest. I couldn't do the same thing as I did with the IL generator where, you know, I, it, it just worked. I had to basically do the wrapper expression and this was the most surprising thing. Basically, the performance will not be good. <laughs> I'll say that. And I couldn't uh, figure out why. I didn't expect it to be that bad. And uh, doesn't, it didn't matter if I did casting in the body of the function or in this uh, lambda expression here. Uh, the performance just wasn't good. I don't know why. If anybody could tell me why, I'd really appreciate it. But that's the Roslyn mapper. It basically, it will be a common theme between those uh, three mappers that I had to perform that conversion just to kind of abide by the interface. It would have been a lot different if I actually specified the type in there, but I didn't want to do that because, well, this is just a better interface. I have a thing. I want to map it to another thing. Uh, that's it. I could probably improve this, this interface as well by basically saying something like map a and then a chain function to the other type that might have probably worked, but we're stuck with this and uh, that's what I was working with. So for the source generator mapper, this is a thing that gets generated and it just has the two types and it just like, it just works. Okay. So map to A and map to B. Uh, manual labor is the same as source generator mapper, except for source generators, you know, you get it for free for manual labor. You have to apply manual labor. And that's pretty much it. Uh, these two don't do any caching because they don't need to. Okay. Uh, the bulk of the optimization has been in these mappers. So without further ado, do, let's go ahead and run it in release. I believe I'll have to go into bench and let's go. And here we are. So manual labor in the first place, but the source generators and manual labor are pretty much same thing, same thing, right? Expression and IL generator around same time as well but about five times slower than source generators. 
A Rosalind performance I'm not gonna talk about, it's in the trash, right? Reflection, it's something most people are familiar with, but again, <clears throat> the performance compared to even the expressions in I'll generate, it's already 10x or and higher than that even. So looking at this, does it mean that you can always go with source generators? And the answer is gonna be no. You're not always gonna be able to do source generators. And the reason why, well, we can talk about it. If we take a look at the current implementation for the source generators, uh, there are ways that you can go about it, but it will ruin this neat interface. You will have to create a configuration file. And the reason for that is, what if this type is coming from, you know, some kind of package? We don't have access to reflection to the full definition when we're running our generation code. We can only look at the surface level of our application. We can only look at this data. If we're importing some library, tough. You know, usually the domains, the service level, level though, those are all in a different package. And if you have two different packages crossing over, you're gonna have a hard time generating, especially if they're in uh, different solutions. At that point, you will need to bring in configuration and you know, that may, that kind of puts you back into manual labor, but not as much manual labor. You just need to keep track of all the things that you're mapping that are not in your project, right? So those are source generators. And, but generally if it works, if it's convenient, if, if everything is in one project, you're on the money, right? You get to this, it basically replaces your manual labor. There is not much else to say about it. Now, Roslyn generators are pretty much source generators as well. However, the class that they generate is at runtime. Now, uh, the important thing with a, a sor Roslyn source generator at runtime is we are still creating a class and there is a library called Martin that is doing this as well in the library. I think it's called Lamar internally the library Martin uses that is basically using this generation and they're using it quite successfully and what they allow to you to do is to basically run a command line that will spit out a bunch of things that it would otherwise generate at runtime. So this actually walks around the issue of what source generators have. So if you can build your command line tool using Roslyn generators at runtime, you can load up all assemblies. You can load up all the classes that are mapped. Doesn't matter if it comes from a package or not. You load it all up, you work it over and you know, you can spit up your files. So this can be still built up into a build pipeline. So before you build your thing, you generate these files and then you build your application. And because those C sharp files are part of your application, they get, you know, put into the final assembly and you can actually reference them during your development. So even though runtime generation has a terrible performance in this case, it doesn't mean you should just discard it because the way that we've built up this C sharp text, well, we can just go ahead and spit it out into a file if we have some kind of a command line tool. Both Rosalind and source generators are going to have an advantage over expressions and IL generation in a sense of if you are spitting out your files, you are getting the source code in a file. That means you can debug it. Expressions and IL generation, once compiled, it's out of reach. It's somewhere there in memory. You have no way to touch it. So if the logic that you've put in there isn't straightforward, uh, this is going to be a hard thing to maintain. Somebody, you know, if somebody writes this kind of code and they quit and then a new guy comes in and he never written expression or IL generator code, <laughs> It's going to be a long time before he can fix anything. Okay, so there is that consideration with expression and IL generator. If they want to explore, uh, it's, you know, it's not necessarily sp straightforward. IL generators, I think it's, uh, the ceiling is like probably the highest out of all of these. However, because you have access to IL code, you can write things that wouldn't be possible with C sharp. So if you want some crazy performance optimization trick that you know of, IL generator will give you that, but obviously no debugging and uh, uh, zero chance of maintainability if you don't have an expert on your team. But you know, the performance here is actually relatively good and uh, you get all the runtime information about your application or potential shell packages. Uh, you, you, you can use reflection to, you know, generate these things and we, and we do. Out of these two approaches, I was uh, quite surprised how expression uh, API did against IL generation. I didn't think they would be this close, but yeah, 
Uh, so expression APIs is definitely something worth learning if uh, you know you are going to be generating logic at runtime, uh, because you know reflection in the end this speed is okay if you are not concerned with uh, performance. You know it is okay to have something like this, uh, but let's quickly take a look at the reflection mapper just in terms of the logic that you would have to implement. It's not like you are caching a value like a function or an object that is going to do the work. It's not like you build up the work and you cache that, uh, which you do in the case of all the other mappers. In the reflection mapper, when you go with a reflection, you don't produce the unit of work to th that is going to perform the work of mapping. In reflection, you can only aggregate data that is information about your program, which you can then use to seed some kind of other process, in which case, you know, we're gathering the data and then we're seeding a process. In that case, reflection itself isn't very easy to maintain. This is instant complexity. And in this case, I would say expression APIs and uh, source generators is probably my favorite approach just because with Roslyn, you would have to go through the process of building that uh, command line CLI, which I guess is kind of what source generators are, but uh, you know, I just like how intuitive it is. It's just you build, it's there, you don't have to do anything else. Manual labor, and not much to say there. If, uh, you know, if manual labor is little, it knocks everything else out of the park, but otherwise source generators, expression API is easy enough to work with. IL generators just because it's generating an assembly and, uh, you know, I wouldn't trust myself with writing tons of this IL generated code and then maintaining it. I wouldn't touch IL generation with, you know, with anything. I would accept the performance impact. A reflection, again, uh, I would consider this quite a complex solution compared to even expressions or source generators just because you are going to have to know all that information and then know additionally about the process that you're seeding. So although probably an easier thing to produce compared to the other ones, uh, the solution that is going to end up here is not intuitive and is complex. And that is it. Those are all the thoughts I have on these mappers. Again, expression and source generators probably win it for me in terms of experience of building it. In terms of performance, you know, source generators and manual labor is the best. If you can make this code go faster, please leave a comment or reach out to me on the Discord server. Obviously, if you have any questions, do that as well. Uh, all the source code is in the description. You can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, you know, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. I gotta eat. Thank you very much to all of my patrons that are supporting me. If you're not yet supporting me, please consider. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a good day.